Okay, so just here's a brief tutorial on how to use R to get an ANOVA analysis. First of all, a couple of things I want to point out here is I have two variables, X, which could be an exam score or something like that, and type, which I've separated into type 1. You just go down further, you'll see type 2 and type 3. I will say that, and I made a note of this on the uh, handout, that this worked a lot better for me when I went to type 1, type 2, type 3, instead of saying just 1s, 2s, and 3s. So if you do have a data set with just 1s, 2s, and 3s, I'd recommend that you change that to something like this. The other thing you have to remember and just keep in mind that when you save this and when you're going to use it for R, make sure that you have saved that as a CSV file. Which I've already done. That won't be the default, so just when you go to type, make sure you go find CF go find CSV. So now I'm going to open R and put in the command that's going to let me search for the file. That Y, you can call that anything. Y is good enough. I would suggest something with a single letter just to save on your typing, but you can call it anything you want. You may want to be more descriptive than that. But anyway, I can just go find that file. In my case, it's on my desktop, and it was scores T. And now I'm going to attach that. Make sure you do that, or not all of your analyses are going to work. And then I'm just going to check. Of course, if I wanted to, I could just hit Y, and I would see all of the data. So now I'm just going to get the means for each group. And I'm going to do by x comma type comma mean. That'll give me the means for each group. Arrow up here, change that mean to SD. Now I can have the standard deviations for each group. I'm going to go in now and hit box plot. And I'm going to say x tilde type. Make sure you hit, have the case the same. That it, In this case, when I had my variables, I didn't call them capital X or capital T. It's just X tilde type. Now you have a box plot of all three. And you can see there aren't any outliers. In fact, they all look fairly symmetric, so I think probably we have uh, normal distributions for all of that. Uh, if I want a histogram for the whole data set, I can just do H I S T and X. Towards the end of this uh, tutorial, I'll show you how to get a histogram for each group. It's a little more involved in, uh, in that. So anyway, it, that'll just be in a couple of minutes. So to do the analysis of variance, I'm going to give it a name for the analysis. This is just a name I can make up that'll be anything when I'm going to call it AV1. Equal now here's the command AOV for analysis of variance X tilde type. You see you won't see anything yet. It's the AV1 is I'm creating something sort of like a variable. I'm saying store the results for an analysis of variance. Now if I hit summary, the name I gave, AV1. I will get the uh, basically the ANOVA table, or what you can use to construct your ANOVA table. There is the, uh, the type is the factor in this case. The residuals the same thing as error. So when I get over under the mean of those, we can see the degrees of freedom. When I get over to mean, that 2120 is the mean square treatment or MSTR, and the mean square for the residuals that's MSE for error. And then of course the F value is the F test, and then there's the probability greater than F. That's the p-value in this case, and you can see it's extremely small. There will be 13 zeros before you get to that 5 there. Um, the significance codes there, you can use those if you want. Uh, I typically just would prefer reporting the p-value. Okay, so uh, now we want to do, we have of course rejected HO, that's an extremely small p-value. So we want to do the Tukey's 
HSD test. There are other tests you can use. And by the way, the two keys test that I'm going to use will only work for what's called a balanced design. That is to say, that you have the same sample size for each group. In this particular case, I had 100 in each, uh, in each group of each type. Tukey HSD. And then I'm just going to refer back to my data set, the AV1, or I'm sorry, not the data set, the sort of like variable where I stored all of the results. And you can see now that um, it gives you type 2 minus type 1, type 3. So this is a difference just between the different types, and you can see they differ. It's put them in order by 2.18 minus 6.66 minus 8.84. The real thing to look at is the uh, lower to upper, and you can look at the P adjusted if you want to. Um, lower to upper is just a confidence interval. For like on the first one, type 1 minus type 2, you're going to go from minus 0.45 to positive 4.8. That includes zero. Therefore, you conclude that there, when we rejected HO, for the analysis variance, we concluded there was at least one difference between population means. This difference includes zero, so this is not the one that's different. So type 1 and type 2 could be the same. And you can see then that there's also a high p-value for that. Type 3 minus type 1 looks like type 3 is somewhere from about 9 and 4 less than type 1. Or alternatively, type 1 is higher than... Um, type 3 by those same amounts. And you can see the p-value is 0. The interval doesn't include 0. They're different. The p-value is very low. They're different. And the same thing for uh, type 3 and type 2. Uh, it looks basically like type 3 is lower than both 1 and 2. Um, in, this, in the type 3 versus 2, about 11.5 to 6.2 lower than type 1. I'm uh, sorry, lower than type 2. That's really all there is to the ANOVA. Um, as I said on the handout and as I said earlier in this, make sure that you have, uh, I'm just saying, based on my recent experience, it's going to be better if you call those uh, ver the values for your type, type 1, type 2, type 3, instead of just 1, 2, and 3. Okay, to get those uh, histograms, uh, really... Uh, I couldn't find anything that said histogram by this, but what I can do is I can unstack these data. In other words, I make it like I have one column uh, with all of the type 1s, one with all the type 2s, and one with all the type 3s. And to do that, I'm going to uh, create another variable. I'm going to call it unY, and that's unstack y. Now I can just look at y. I'm sorry, look at uny, my new one. And you can see now that they are, in fact, you can look at the two of those and see the difference. One of them, the uh, y, has all the values of x in one column followed by the type 1, type 2, or type 3, so one element per row. And then uny has type all the type 1s in one column, all the type 2s in one column, and so on. So now that I've done that, I can do, uh, for example, histogram for type 1. That one was capitalized, by the way. Okay, didn't like that. Oh. I have to attach UNY. Now I can try that histogram type 1 again, and I've got one. And then I can do the same thing for 2, and the same thing for 3. Another thing I'll show you here is you can actually get all three of those on one um, graph. And I can't remember exactly what this <laughs> command really stands for, but I can show you what it is. P A R M F C O L. So I'm going to divide things into columns. Equal. 
C, I know that stands for concatenate, just put things together. And I'm going to put 3, comma 1. That means I'm going to have three rows and just one column. Now, I can go put histogram 1, 2, and 3. And they'll all be on one graph, and that um, might look good to you or not. You can look at it and see. I kind of like it all on one graph like that. I can look at this and say that uh, the shapes are all mound-shaped. Maybe a little skew in the bottom too, but not much. I think I would call that, I would be comfortable in future studies taking relatively small sample sizes based on the mound shape of these uh, distributions. Okay, well that's all for, the, for this tutorial. Um,